collecting fresh water today and uh, this is a pl brook called Plumbers and we're going to be getting our water from here today and showing a couple of examples of how to treat it but what I have done is followed the river all the way up a good couple of hundred yards and around the bend and a bit further on up and what I'm looking for is dead animals uh, you don't want to be taking your water from anywhere near dead animals sheep what may have fallen in the water and drowned because they'll contaminate it and even the best purifying won't get rid of those when we're talking about water this is what we're looking for clear fast moving water ideally with a waterfall which we haven't got here but there is one a bit further on up but for filming purposes we've come here so that makes it well oxygenated makes the water taste better also if there's any chemicals present wherever the water is coming over a waterfall and froths you can tell whether what's in the water choice of uh, how to purify your water you've got a choice of chemical modern pump systems what don't involve chemicals or straightforward boiling boiling's my favorite it three minutes of boiling water purifies the water safe simple as that and it's the cheapest there is but you can't always have a fire so that's when these other methods come into play this is the best way of purifying water in my opinion boiling three minutes rapid boil will kill any nasties and then you've got options of what to put the water in a lot of people use these camel packs now they are good for carrying water but they're not very good when the water is inside purifying it purifying it and also the, the, the water what's in there if it's in the pipe the chemical doesn't, chemical doesn't get there so they're not best to use if you're out there going to be doing some survival and collecting your own water all the time but they're great for carrying safe water in and keeping you hydrated then my personal favorite is the british army canteen they're black they're black for a reason uv light destroys chemicals that you're using to purify your water even the slightly transparent ones are, are colored to stop that happening but these are bomb proof no sunlight can penetrate so your chemical will work for you all the time these are pretty good but there is an element of UV light destroying the chemical the benefit of these transparent ones is that you can either see the bugs or anything nasty in it or if the chemical is not dissolved you'll see the this chlorine tablet for instance you'll see the chlorine tablet in the bottom knowing that it's not dissolved so you're not taking a swig of it and swallowing it like that which isn't very good for you um, this ha happens a lot more in cold weather it says 20 minutes for a chlorine tablet to dissolve in cold weather you can double that time so it's 40 minutes easy and so if it's really cold it's almost ice water it takes forever to dissolve you might have to give it a good rattle but they are handy what we're going to look at is these new straws that are on the market basically you go up to the water source no bottle needed and drink directly and there's no particular chemical taste with these um, and they reckon you can do up to 85 I think it's about 150 litres through one straw and they're about 10 or each so that's pretty good going very lightweight though the next one we'll go on to is the Travel Wild Pump and these are ceramic filters with iodine and the principle is pretty simple you put the one end in the water source and you put the one end in the water source and the other end into your water bottle and pump away there's a little filter at the end of the tube to stop any leaves and debris going in and they say in about two minutes you uh you put the water a litre of water. I find it takes a bit longer than that. They must have a better stroke. So. I'm not doing a full canteen today. And then you put the lid on and you wait five or six minutes before that while the iodine in the water as it agitates works and gets rid of any bad is. Well that's working. 
this is the latest thing on the market, Lifesaver water purifier. No chemicals with this. With iodine and chlorine, if you've got any prostate problems or stomach problems, it may react and make it your casualty. This relies on pure filters. And there's not, the experts say there's not anything on the planet that can pass through these filters. As to do with uh, waterborne parasites. This water's clean, you could leave the sponge on to catch any leaves if you're doing it from a lake, let's say. Now this is ready to come with you and the water's transport. And to drink, you just take the lid off, pop the teat, and drink. I actually don't like this taste of this very much. It says there's no chemicals. I have got a carbon filter in there to take away uh, man-made chemicals as well. But actually, I don't like the taste of it. It may need more breaking in. Or I'm just used to ID. We're going to use the transparent one now. And what we've got here is chlorine tablets. And it says one per litre. It says dissolve for 20 minutes. After that 20 minutes, I got these neutralizers that take away the chemical taste. But you can't put them in at the same time because they work against each other. So that'll be on the hoof for a little while. And the next one is iodine drops. And they say one to two drops, depending on how dirty the water is. Uh, if the, the dirtier the water, they say increase it by increase the drops. This water is pretty clean, so we only want one or two drops. Again, this takes 20 minutes to mix into the water. And then I've got a neutralizer to help take away the iodine taste. The other one I carry in my survival tin is potassium permanganate. And this is quite good chemical to have. This is one. Because a few grains will purify a litre of water. Get some in. And what we're after. It's a light pink colour and that is safe to drink. We can add some more of this now. We can add some more to make it a light violet which will be good for an antifungicide like athlete's foot and crop rot. Darker again to a crimson and that will be good for surgical equipment or knives and forks. If you haven't got a fire source to kill it by heat, you can dip it in this and it will sterilise the blades as well. So quite a useful chemical. You're going to also like fires from potassium permanganate. If the water is not clean, what do we do? I've got this here, which is called a milk bag. And the principle of this, the water may have leaves, mud, stones, sediment and stuff like that. So what you do is put it in the water and let it absorb as much water as possible. Then you fill it up to the line with the water. There's a few bits in there too. Put the pile. And then we suspend it off a tree. The water will trickle through, taking away all the sedimented matter. The water will not be safe to drink though. It still needs purification, chemical or boiling, but it will take away the leaves. You don't want to leave the leaves in the water because there's going to be higher microorganisms on the leaf which the chemical may not attack, which then you will digest. And that's a milk bag. Take that away because I'm not using it today. If I haven't got a milk bag, 
I use an old mosquito net for the same purpose, just to get the water and bits out. And whenever I finish my water purification, generally this water will be okay, but if you're cutting it from a pond, it'll taste bad. And I add, once the purification's done, vitamin tablets. It gives it a bit of an orange taste and takes away the chemical and the taste of the water, which can sometimes taste just like the smell of a pond. Also, I carry transparent bags. And you, were, you would have saw my, on the video, my uh, perspiration traps. The other one is, um, if the water is like salt water or completely contaminated, and there's no way you know, you know it's not gonna be safe to drink no matter what you do to it, what you can do is over fire, you boil your the dirtiest water, you can, well, dirtiest water, and then on a stick, you let, a, let the steam absorb into the cloth. Wring the cloth out and keep on doing this. You don't get a lot of water for your labor, but you do get some, which is better than none. But that's the set, and that's through steam and evaporation way, using the cloth. If you haven't got a milk bag, you're gonna have to improvise something else. Generally, it's either classed as your t-shirt or your sock. And in here, you put a moss at the bottom, followed by gravel, if you can get some, charcoal from an old fire. If not, make a fire and use the charcoal followed by sand if you can get some, followed by moss. And what happens? Certain mosses have natural iodine, stagnant moss for instance. That starts working the water, plus catching any debris. It goes through the sand, which catches, it acts like a micro filter, catches some of the larger bacteria organisms. It goes through the charcoal, which a charcoal will absorb some of the microorganisms and say in the charcoal. Also charcoal has a potassium effect, particularly white charcoal made from white wood or white wood ash. Going through the final layer of more moss which takes away the charcoal, or the gravel helps take away the charcoal and then the moss helps take away the charcoal and the colour of the, the colour of the dirt, uh, the ash. Also urea potassium in the water as it hits there although the water coming out will still need to be purified by boiling or chemical.